standing in the middle of the sippy hole of the world's swamp buggy championship and normally where i'm standing is under four feet of water they have drained the water but we're in south florida and even though you drain the water you're going to have a mushy situation i'm going to show you what i mean look at my foot here it's all sandy the drivers with a whole lot of horsepower are not going to be able to put that horsepower to use today because it'll just dig out something else we're standing at the base of the second jump in the left lane the drivers came out a moment ago and noticed that this jump is six inches narrower six inches then the other jump. So the drivers are trying to figure out how to take this and make it to their advantage. The reason it's six inches narrower is that the car they use for the first car in this jump is just a smaller car. But the drivers immediately pick that out and are trying to make it an advantage for them. Will it be an advantage or a disadvantage as we go through the show? We're going to be finding that out later. Back to you, Gary. Army, a look now at some highlights from round one. The fast qualifier, Gene Patterson, the far lane in Bigfoot against Pam Botters in Boogie Van. Now, the last time these two met, Pam upset Gene, but Gene gets revenge this time and takes the victory with a 5.40 clocking. Yeah, Gene knew that she was going to be a tough cookie on that start line. We're going to go to the crush cam to show you exactly what foot looks like. Whoa. That gave me a headache yeah. and a twisted neck. Bump the camp, didn't it? <laughs> Wayne Smozanic, the far lane, Tropical Thunder, Fred Shaver, the near side, and the Dodge Barefoot, and it's all Fred Schaefer. You can see a no man's land. He was making so much horsepower, he's actually picking the sand up and throwing it. You can see that with the camera eye. And now look at Kirk Dabney and Brian Welsh. Kirk Dabney, the far lane. Welsh, the near lane. Brian Welsh and Dabney, both privateers. Welsh starting to make a name for himself in this sport, representing Chevrolet. He made it a 561 time. And now it's the... Wildfoot truck the far lane with Andy Brass and no problem the Ford of John Moore. John Moore trying to use some of the off-road technology. He's just not able to tweak that truck to make it work for him like Andy Brass who did that at 520. In Good that time for Brass at 520. And now we look at Rick Radler the right side. Mark Hall in the left lane. Ford on the right, Chevy on the left. Let the race speak for itself. Here I'm winging that throttle when they're flying through the air, that wah, 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 wah. They're really working that throttle. There's a look at Rick Rattler's 543 in the Ford Snake Bite. Now it's Ken Deppy in the Dodge Express and Don Van Lu in Magnum Force. This is all action from round one, and Ken Deppy takes the big victory and advances to round two, his time 551 as he slides to a stop in the quagmire. It is a sunny day. We're coming back with a round two competition. Welcome back to Florida Sports Park in Naples, where four trucks present the Penta four-wheel and off-road Jamboree Suncoast Nationals, a part of the BF Goodrich Performance Series. Gary Lee along with Army Armstrong. And as we take a look now at the round two matchups, Bigfoot against Barefoot, Wildfoot against Moving Violation, and the Snakebite Ford against the Dodge Express. One of the things we're keeping an eye on is the Ford camp comes out with Andy Brass, proven driver, proven combination, the computer team, He's out of St. Louis, Missouri, representing, you know, the Wildfoot truck. But he's going up against Brian Welch. Who's this kid? The moving violation truck. He's a privateer that represents a Chevy camp. So you got the Ford Chevrolet battle, but you also got another battle. Corporate America against a privateer. That's just the way the cards laid on this. They can be tough in all kinds of motorsports to go up against oh, factory back yeah. teams. And Wildfoot, the Ford of Andy Brass, takes the victory. Once again, the fast loser will advance. So we'll have to check the times of the losers. 5.36 for Brass. Now, we know that's going to pull him in, but what we can do is watch Welch. Now, let's see if that 5.53 is going to hold up. Interesting part of the track right here. The shutdown area presents some problems all its own. Well, it's a quagmire down there, and these guys are sliding to a stop under braking. There's the margin of victory for Wildfoot, but then it becomes exciting when they start sliding in the shutdown area. Yeah, the sand on the starting line, you can see the truck's really rooting the sand up. Andy Brass, only the third fast qualifier this afternoon. And Army, you're down there with Andy right now. Let's go trackside to Andy Brass. Andy, every time you go up against one of these new young guns, you know you got to have it on kill, don't you? That's right. You know, the Ford Wildfoot's been running good for us today. We was over there watching Brian's times. He turned out some good times. He put some new parts on his truck. He went with the uh, Linko in the truck, and it's been helping out a whole lot, you know. Uh, we've just been holding together with the C6s. They've been doing us a, a good job. The John Cosby built Ford Hemi we're running now is putting out some horsepower. We're able to hook it to the ground thanks to the Firestones. So the truck's been working good for us. It's doing good today. 
<laughs> and a good interview gets all the sponsors yeah, mentioned. Yeah, I was going to say, he must practice in front of a mirror to do that. <laughs> Fred Schaefer in barefoot, the Dodge, and he will go up against Bigfoot, the Ford of Gene Patterson. Gene is the fast qualifier here this afternoon. Fifth best qualifier, Fred Schaefer, after round one, Army asked Fred about racing at this facility. Army, one of the problems down here is we can't get hooked up on the line. Everybody's times are pretty close down here, but everybody's having problems getting hooked up on the sand. We put a little more air in the tires and try and get the tire on top of the sand so we can get going. That's about it. In any kind of motorsport, you tweak the chassis, you make adjustments to the engine to adapt to the racing facility. Yeah, you adjust to the track. The track doesn't adjust to you. Horsepower in the mid range pull it out for the Dodge. Now oh, the shutout foot. fun. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, this is, once again, this is the mile of mud. This is where they run those swamp buggies here under a couple of feet of water. Yeah, they actually drained four feet of water out of here. And they say there's an alligator out here somewhere. That's the reason I'm standing up on the board. Well, this is four. There are plenty of alligators down here. But this facility is amazing. The only one I know of in the country, they provide these people of South Florida with all types of motorsporting events. This week, monster trucks. They got the uh, swamp buggy races. We do mud racing in here, so fun place to be. Yeah, don't forget they run stock cars here as well, so a true multi-purpose facility. Well, now, Army, you have some thoughts on this next matchup featuring the snake fight with Rick Rattler and Dodge Express with Ken Deppie. Gary, I don't care what anybody says, corporate America is involved in this sport. Right now we've got a situation where Dodge just beat a Ford. Barefoot just put Bigfoot out. On the starting line, we've got another scenario where Dodge Express is going after the snake bite truck. Another Dodge Ford scenario. You win on Sunday, you sell on Monday. That's the bottom line. Let's see who's going into this next round. All right, will it be Dodge? Will it be Ford? And there is a look at Ken Deppy out of Jefferson City, Missouri and the Dodge Express. And he'll pull alongside Rick Rattler, Cobra Creek, Colorado. You'll, and notice, Snake you'll notice that Deppy comes into this thing, and he'll do the dry hop to that Dodge, the vehicle closest to us. They find out that that makes that truck leave the line a little bit harder. The dry hop, in other words, fall starting before the race so they can get everything ready to go. Meanwhile, the Colorado Ford, he just went to the line and waited. What a race. Oh, who was it? Looks like who a, was it? Looked like a P-51 Mustang nosing over at that finish line. I believe the Dodge with a 5-3-3 will make it an all-Dodge final. Let's wait and see. 5-3-3 for Deppy as we wait for the snake fight. 5-36 indeed. Deppy will advance. So it looks like Bigfoot is the fast loser. He will come back to comprise our four-truck field for the semis with barefoot, Bigfoot, Wildfoot, and the Dodge Express, and there is the margin of victory just that close for Ken Deppie. And talk about the battle in corporate America in the semifinals. Two Fords and two Dodges, and Ken Deppie is happy, and he is with Army. Boy, it just keeps coming back to you. <laughs> Army, I'll tell you, it's been one of those days you just got to fight it sometimes. We broke a shock qualifying and came back. I broke both my snubbers off. We got it fixed again. Uh, they just told me that I beat Snakebite. I was glad of that. Uh, Snakebite and I have been running real close all year. You were not aware that you were the winner on that race? Not until I just pulled back in the pits and uh, the crew gave me the thumbs up. It's on to the semifinals for Ken Deppie. A big thumbs up, and we're coming back with more action from Florida Sports Park. Two broken snubbers. That's got to hurt. Welcome back to Florida Sports Park in Naples, where four trucks present the Penta four-wheel and off-road Jamboree Suncoast Nationals, a part of the BF Goodrich Performance Series. These Jamborees offer a host of activities for the truck lover as well as the entire family. And when they roll out this big tire, it means it's time for the tough truck competition. This competition really turned into a fun thing. What do you do? You take street trucks, you go out, you set up an obstacle course, and then guys and gals do weird things when they get in front of a crowd. Uh, hey, like this they tire get hung up on that big tire we're talking yeah, about. This tire can present a problem if you hit it like a sissy, and he just didn't hit that thing at all with that well, Chevy pickup. You truck. go tell him he's a sissy. I'm going to stand over here. Remember, I still Let, remember the alligators are out there. He lets me drive his pickup truck. I will not hit that tire like a sissy as long as I'm in his vehicle. Okay, that was a By the way, that was a woman driving that, Gary. Oh, her now vehicle. the Fords come out. Let's see what they're going to do in the obstacle course. I like the windshield wiper. It gives it a nice touch. <laughs> Balloon on the back. 
That could be the nitrous bottle, the hidden nitrous bottle. 